Sometimes technological innovations come from unexpected places. In the 1960s, biologists were studying jellyfish that phosphoresced, meaning that they light up or glow in the dark. Ultimately, they isolated a protein from the jellyfish called green fluorescent protein that gives them this property. But it wasn't until the 1990s that biologists were able to take that green fluorescent protein and use it to label different genes and proteins within cells. And this revolutionized the biotechnology and pharmaceutical industries. So the message here is you really need to invest in basic science because you never know where it's gonna lead. We went from jellyfish to a biotechnology innovation. My name is Jessica Winter, and I've been studying materials for cancer diagnostics for over 20 years. But my story really begins 40 years ago with materials called quantum dots. Quantum dots are nanoparticles that are used for solar cells because they can convert light into electricity. But it turns out they also convert light into light and they can be used to label cancer markers. I study cancer pathways, which are really complicated. Even if I blow up one small part of a pathway, it's still really hard to understand what's happening. But that complication is really important. Drugs that you may take for cancer turn off just one part of a pathway, but because of the redundancy between all the different cancer pathways, the cell will just turn on a different pathway and still survive. To understand what medicines work best for patients and in which combinations, we need to be able to see what's happening inside the cell. But the pathways are really difficult to study because there's so many components. We need lots and lots of markers. Unfortunately, current technologies permit only a handful of components to be labeled at the same time. I'm developing technologies to light up all the different pathways within those cancer cells. You can think of it as taking black and white TV and turning it into color TV. But the technologies that I've developed not only provide a visual image, they also allow us to turn it into a quantitative number. For example, HER2, Human Epidermal Growth Factor Receptor 2, is a marker for treatment with the drug Herceptin. I've developed technology that allows you to label HER2 first in cell lines and ultimately in patient cells, and then convert that image into an expression number for each individual cell. These technologies help clinicians to match patients to therapies. However, normally, this is where the story ends. That goal is never achieved. Amazingly, perhaps ironically, I was diagnosed with breast cancer while I was doing this research. And it really changed my perspective on how research is conducted. I realized that I had a really unique opportunity because unlike most cancer patients, I'm also a researcher and I have the ability to fight cancer on both fronts. I wanted to take the technologies that I developed in my lab and use them to help other people so that maybe they wouldn't have to go through what I did. But it turns out that that's really difficult to do. It truly takes a village. In addition to traditional funders like National Science Foundation or National Institutes of Health, which supported my um, bench side research, I needed support from other entities like Ohio's Third Frontier and Rev1 Ventures to help bridge the gap between the bench and the bedside. So why did I need all this support? Despite the success that we had, even up to the point of patient diagnostics, we face significant challenges. It turns out quantum dots are manufactured in oily solutions, but your body is water. So we have to find a way to transfer the quantum dots from the oil solution into water. And even when we accomplish that, we can have problems because the particles can become unstable. Quantum dots are nanoparticles and most of their properties come from the atoms on the surface. So when I put a coating on top of the particle to help move it into the water, Sometimes I can lose the fluorescence property and the particles no longer light up. Obviously, I can't use them as a diagnostic label if they're not fluorescent. But the biggest challenge that we faced was in the scale up. So with the original process that we had developed, it took nine hours to make enough material to do a mouse study, two years to make enough material for a primate study, and 22 years to make enough material for a human study. Obviously, that's not commercialization ready. 
So in order to overcome these challenges, in 2012, I founded Core Quantum Technologies, which is a company focused on diagnostic markers for leukemia and lymphoma detection. Eight long years later, we developed commercial technologies. I'm actually not joking. The image that you see before you took eight years of hard work. In this image, the black curve shows the product that's currently used for detection. On the left-hand side are the negative cells, and on the right-hand side are the cells that are positive for that biomarker. If you look at the region in the middle, you can see that there's overlap between the negative and the positive, and this is the region where it would be hard to tell if your cell is positive or negative, basically our false diagnosis region. Our product not only increased the separation between the positive and the negative cells, reducing this ambiguous diagnosis region, but the positive cells are also one full order of magnitude brighter. What does this mean? It means that we can detect a lower level of biomarker with this assay, which means that we can probably detect your cancer sooner. We're really excited about the benefits that these technologies are bringing to patients. But the innovation pipeline is slow. My story started in 1982 when quantum dots were developed for solar cells. Biological application for labeling didn't begin until 1998 and we weren't commercialization ready until 2012. Our sales didn't start until 2020. That's a 40 year journey. To solve our greatest challenges, and certainly cancer is among them, we must be willing to invest both our resources and our time. We have to be willing to play the long game if we wanna reap the benefits of basic science. Thank you. Thank you.